When you find a good thing, you want to go back and enjoy it again, and that is definitely the case this morning because we were up in Dunlap a few weeks ago talking with Travis Fawcett at the Rolling Oak Distillery. In my hand is one of the good things that we found, your cocktail uh, of your moonshine that you have here. We came back, though, to get kind of into the weeds with you a little bit this morning, Travis, because it really all begins the magic of these cocktails with the moonshine in those jars, right? Yes, Although this is vodka. Yeah, that one's vodka. He was looking at me <laughs> like he thought I was going to get it wrong. So everything that we have here, including the vodkas, mm -hmm. y'all are making in-house at the distillery. Yes, is that right? Everything from beginning to end we make here. It all starts with the corn? Yes, ma'am. All of our products are corn-based and um, spring water. I mean, we do everything naturally, all the flavorings. Um, it's all natural, no artificial colors, flavorings. That's amazing to me that there are no artificial colors or flavorings. And when I first sampled this cocktail, and the reason I wanted to mention it again, I really thought that you had nicely diluted it down for me because it is so smooth, right? Did you see his face? Oh, no. <laughs> These, he, what, can, I, can I quote you directly? Yes, he said, if you had had that whole thing, you'd be walking around here sideways. Yes, ma'am. There's you, a lot of alcohol in that. A lot of alcohol in there, but what you pride yourself on is how smooth the moonshine is, which is why I didn't taste it. Yes, ma'am. It all begins with the mash. Whatever you put into the mash quality-wise is what you're going to get back out. The distillation and everything has a lot to do with it, mm -hmm. but what you start off with is a great bearer of the end product. So what you start off with is what you call the original. Yes, ma'am. On our moonshine line, the original is our base liquor in all of our moonshine products. And, of course, the vodka is a whole totally different line. In so looking at the, the flavorings that you have, all natural, you're very proud of the coffee one. Yes, ma'am. That's one of like our newest one? ones. Um, because our distributor really wants us to do like a cream-based product, and I did not want to do a cream-based product. This one here... When you try it, or if you try it, um, you will swear up and down there's cream in it, but there's not. It has honey in there to simulate the creaminess. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal with you. If I can make a deal with y'all too, not to judge me. So, I really want to try the original, because that's okay. where it all starts. Right. But you really want me to try the coffee. So, you've got a little tiny jar back there. Yes, can you pour me just a little smidgen of the coffee one yeah. first? Okay. So, see if I can taste the honey. It looks like black coffee. It's real coffee. We use very high quality coffee. Um, everything we use is high quality. We don't use anything of That's not a any low quality. That's a smidgen in our line. <laughs> <laughs> don't look, okay. That tastes like coffee. And that's very high octane liquor. Then I can't have but that one little bit. Oh, you can have as much as you want to, but I can't promise you what the rest of your day is going to be like. I'm not doing that. <laughs> uh, but you can taste the honey. Mm -hmm. That's what's giving the creaminess in there. That's really, really good. And I've noticed something. Every time you, you're making something for me, you're pouring it over ice. Yes, ma'am. Is that because the cooler it is, the better it is? I like it better myself over ice, um, keeping it cool, because a lot of these what we call our porch sippers, um, they're nice to sit on your porch and just sip away on. Well, it really is. I mean, over the years on the show, we've had different people come on with their own products, and we've kind of gotten a kick out of the, the kick right. that you get when you drink it. And I'm guessing if I tried the original, I might get that a little bit more. You're going to get the kick out of the original. But a lot of people don't like that. So this is a very suburban drink. Yes. Um, and the country, our country folk like it just as much. I well, mean, sure. The, all the flavors have been... Uh, phenomenal successes so far. Uh, not that we're trying to toot our own horn, but um, we hadn't had one come out yet that nobody just didn't like. I'll toot it for him a little bit because, <laughs> I mean, you have shared these successes. You're, you're very new yes, as a business. The name, by the way, Rolling Oak, um, I think it's kind of a faded thing. That's the name of your farm. Yes, ma'am. Where you grew up. And then you learned or found out that the only way you could transport Yeah, when we do the, the product, whiskey in the barrels, it's so heavy. The only way to really transport it is to roll the barrel. So it's just a happy coincidence that rolling oak goes right with 
our new business adventure. In case you did not see it when we were here last time, I told them then that the area in Dunlap where his place is, is nestled down this gravel road in the woods. When you begin to build it, uh, you found an old whiskey bottle, evidence yes, that some folks have been enjoying whiskey here for oh, a yeah. long time. <laughs> Yeah, for a number of years, there's been a lot of liquor flow off this mountain. But you are very forward thinking in your business model here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we try our best to be um, not only doing right by the product. As the company grows, I don't want to, uh, things to get out of sight. So when you try rolling oak, it's not investor base. It's me, my wife, and my sister and family. Um, we went out every right grow our bridges. You learned from your grandfather, in mm -hmm. part, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what do you think he'd say? He would, they would be very surprised on both sides, uh, the legal aspect of it, and probably tickled death, because if they had ever went legal, they could have made as much liquor as they wanted to, because, you know, back in the day, making 100 gallons was a big run, and now, you know, we made batch 500 gallons the one shot, and. They'd, they'd be mesmerized by the equipment and how things progressed and be able to do all this out in the open. Everything is, is from his own hands to what eventually goes into the jar that yes. you're going to purchase, uh, his or his family's. You're in 33 Tennessee counties? Well, right now we're in 15 southeast counties. Uh, Tennessee's broken up regionally as far as distribution goes with the state. So we're in the um, 15 southeast counties, and we just entered the Nashville market, which includes 33 counties around Nashville. Okay, so if you're watching us anywhere in the viewing area in Tennessee, you can find this at probably any liquor store near you. Just about any liquor store, and if they don't have it, tell them they need to have it. And your fa So the coffee was mighty good. I'm not so sure I'd begin your day with it, maybe end your day with it. <laughs> right. Um, it's really amazing what you're doing, and when you come up here to a visit, for a visit when they're open for the public to come. There are pieces of family lore all throughout. All that'll be part of the tour. You'll get to see it, feel it, touch it, come in here and make mash with us, run liquor, you know, get the full experience. I'm pleased to say that I can, that I can say that I knew you when, because I think your name's about to blow up, Travis. Well, I was hoping that I just said farm and send liquor out, but it seemed to go the other direction. Um, more people is knowing me than I ever anticipated already, and um, we're growing exponentially. Well, here's where you'll find them. It's Rolling Oak Distillery in Dunlap. Uh, their contact information there on your screen. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.